All right, so starting our second lecture, it says that isn't it exciting? Um, and so it's the quote that we have is the absence of evidence is not the evidence of absence. And so what we're going to do is we're going to continue looking at light and how light affects the atom. So the learning goals that we have for this unit, students will understand the behavior of light as both a wave and a particle. Uh, number two, be familiar with the various divisions of the electromagnetic spectrum and use the formula C equals lambda F to solve for an unknown variable. Now, what we already know, um, electrons uh, in an atom can move up and down energy levels, um, and the absorption moves, in, moves electrons up in an energy level, and when it moves down an energy level, we have an emission of energy, so the emission moves the electrons down the energy level. Um, what we should have learned from the lab is that different frequency of radiation moves electrons up to different energy levels. So not all specific um, light or different radiation will bump it up. It has to be a very quantized energy level or energy to move it up an energy level. Um, higher frequencies move electrons into higher energy levels. And there are divisions of the electromagnetic spectrum. Um, now, when we're talking about light, light is a very complex topic, um, and when we think about light, we can think of light as two ways. The first way to look at it is that light is a wave. Um, there is a young double split experiment, um, and what it does is when we're looking at it, basically what he did, we shot um, light at two slits and he measured what happened on the other side, and with the only thing we really need to know from this is that light because of this experiment, Young's double split experiment, double slit experiment, you see there's two slits right here, um, that light can act as a wave. And then what we can see here, looking at the photoelectric effect um, of light, we can see that light is also a particle. And so basically what we're looking at these two things and what we kind of need to pull from this information is that by experimental evidence what we get to is we get to this wave particle duality. And this is the really the meat of it, the important thing, is that light exhibits wave and particle duality. What that means is it it's acts like a wave and acts like a particle. And what scientists do is they pick the easiest form for the experiment they are performing. And so so when we're looking at it, we can say that a particle of light is what we call a photon, um, but we can also look at light as a wave, um, a specific wavelength and just like a regular wave. And so the electromagnetic spectrum uh, is all right here. And so what we'll have when we're looking at it, we have all types of visible light. And so we can start down here with our radio waves and we have radio waves down here. Um, and then we have microwaves, and then infrared, then ultraviolet rays, and then we have our x-rays and then gamma rays. And this tiny little portion right here, which is not a lot, that is visible light. And the majority of times we think of light, we think of light as just what we see, the colors that we see and everything else. But light is a very vast and it's very complex. And so there's a bunch of different forms of the electromagnetic spectrum, and they're all considered light. Big thing that we have here is that light travels all light. So radio waves, microwaves, infrared, ultraviolet, x-rays, gamma rays, visible light, they all move at 3.0 times 10 to the 8th meters per second. So they move 300 million meters every single second. And no matter what form it is, if it's a radio wave or if it's microwaves, or if it's visible light that we're actually seeing, it all moves at 3.0 times 10 to the 8th meters per second. Um, radio waves. Now, radio waves are, they have a very low frequency. They have a very low energy. Um, they have a very high wavelength. Um, and it's used, when we use it in chemistry, we can use radio waves to basically excite the nu nucleus, and we can use it to basically pull out um, what's attached to the nucleus. So we can make the nucleus bend and move and everything else because it's a very low energy, uh, and that's the key here, low energy, low frequency light, and so therefore it affects just the nucleus and we can use it that way. Um, microwaves. Microwaves are slightly higher energy than radio. They have a slightly higher frequency um, than radio and a slightly smaller wavelength than radio. And so what we see here 
is that wavelength will go down a little bit and frequency will go up a little bit and energy will go up a little bit. Um, and what we use it for in chemistry is we kind of use it to observe the rotation of molecules. So how they rotate and how they, they affect each other in those chemical bonds. Um, infrared, now infrared, we're making it a little bit, the wavelength a little bit smaller, so the frequency goes up and the energy goes up. Um, and it's used to observe the vibration of bonds between atoms, and that's how we use it in chemistry. And then we have visible light. Um, it has a very medium frequency, medium energy, and so we have a little bit, it'll be a smaller wavelength, um, and it's exciting the electrons. So we can use the visible light, um, we can use that in our spectroscopy to excite electrons and make the electrons move a higher energy level and back down, and we can look at their bright line spectrums. Um, now, what we can actually look at this, but what can I see? The only part that we can actually see is this part of the electromagnetic spectrum. And what we see is the, the electromagnetic spectrum is very, very big. And we can see we have really long radio waves here. And here's our AM and FM radio waves, which we actually get on our radios. And then microwaves. And this is our, old, our UV and uh, infrared radiation, X-rays, and those would be our gamma rays. And so we really only see a very small part of the electromagnetic spectrum. Um, ultraviolet, now ultraviolet is a type of electromagnetic radiation, very high frequency, high energy, low wavelength, um, and the it really excites the electrons and really can get them jump um, very high energy levels. Um, then we have x-rays, very higher frequency, higher energy, very the wavelength's getting really low here, and we can use this to ionize atoms, and we talked about this, ionization energy, it's the energy required to remove an electron, so we can ionize atoms, um, x-rays such a large amount of um, energy that it can actually pull an electron away from a neutral atom and make that ion. And then we have gamma rays, um, which gamma rays have the highest frequency, highest energy, they have the lowest possible wavelength, um, and we can actually remove electrons from very, very close to the nucleus, which takes a lot of energy, um, but gamma rays have very, very high energy. Um, so let's look at this. And so on our first example, what we're going to look at is we're going to develop an acronym to help you remember the ordering of frequency, wavelength, and energy. So we need to learn a little acronym. Um, one acronym that you could use for this is that uh, we have red Martians invade Venus using x-ray guns. And so what we can think of this is that we have red is for radio, Martians is for microwaves, invade is for infrared, uh, Venus would be visible, using would be UV light, um, ultraviolet light, and then x-rays would be obviously x-rays, and then guns would be gamma rays. And so that's one little acronym that we could use to... Um, remember the different types of electromagnetic radiation. Looking at our next one, it says a cell phone frequency is very similar to the frequency that causes water to heat up in a microwave. Should you be concerned about placing a cell phone close to your head, uh, justify your answer using the clear method. So what we should, the answer that we have for this is no sh student should not be concerned. Um, the cell phone radiation has a lower energy and a larger wavelength than x-rays. Um, and x-rays are the lowest energy and x-rays, I'm sorry, um, x-rays are the lowest energy and largest wavelength uh, to penetrate bones. And so micro, microwave radiation does not penetrate the skin. And so we can think of the only thing that really can get penetrate our skin and everything else, those are x-rays, and microwaves are much, much, they're much, much lower than that, and so we really have nothing to worry about when we're placing a cell phone next to our head. Now, jumping into our new equation, our electromagnetic radiation, um, all electromagnetic radi radiation is governed by this equation, um, C equals lambda F, where C is the speed of light, and it is 3.0 times 10 to the 8th meters per second. It's a constant. It doesn't change. It's on um, all your formula charts that you have. Um, and then we have our lambda here, which is our wavelength. It's measured in meters. Uh, it's the 
length of one complete wave. So when we're looking at this, um, a wavelength is when we measure wavelength, it would be one complete wave. So you can think of it from crest to crest, or you can think of it just to any two points on a wave would be our wavelength. And then our frequency, frequency which we saw in our first lecture, that is measured in hertz, and it's number of the waves per second. So when we think of this, a wavelength is distance, and frequency is how often that wave occurs. So this has a very high wavelength and a very low frequency. A wave like this has a very low wavelength, so the point from here to here, that's low, but the frequency is very high because you've got a lot of wavelengths in per second. And so that would be our example of looking at frequency and looking at wavelength. So let's jump into our first question. It says label all of the following variables and arrange the equation to solve for frequency. So we have a speed of light, we have our wavelength, and we have our frequency. We want to rearrange it to solve for frequency. So all we do is divide by our lambda, cancels, and we get frequency equals speed of light divided by wavelength. And the key here, and this is one thing I'm going to point out here, this wavelength, since the speed of light is in meters per second, we always got to make sure that our wavelength is in meters. But this is how we would solve it algebraically for frequency. Jumping into our next question, it says the sun emits all different forms of electromagnetic radiation. That's what EM is, electromagnetic radiation towards the Earth. Which segment of the Earth spectrum will, or which, which segment of the electromagnetic spectrum will reach the Earth first? And so when we think about this, you need to think, well, it emits all different types of electromagnetic radiation, but remember, they all move at the exact same speed. They all move at 3.0 times 10 to the 8th meters per second. So they will all reach the Earth at the exact same time because they're moving all at the exact same speed. Looking at our next one, it says, what is the frequency of energy of a 750 nanometer red light? So we want to know what is the frequency. Um, and then we can also, here we can also get energy. Um, and so we'll have to pull an equation from our first um, example or our first lecture to be able to do this, but we can also do two. So we have 700 nanometers. The first thing that we need to do, anytime we're dealing with visible light, a nanometer is 1.0 times 10 to the ninth. We have 1.0 times 10 to the ninth nanometers in one meter. And so that's a lot of nanometers. A trick to this, one thing you can think, if you're dealing with visible light, 750 nanometers, you can always, it's going to be 7.5 times 10 to the negative seventh. So if you're dealing with light, visible light, it's always going to be, if it's below a thousand, so 750, all any of those, it's always going to be times 10 to the negative seventh. And you can save yourself a step there. And so what we have here is we're first going to solve for frequency. So frequency equals the speed of light all over lambda, which we did that in our first example. And so frequency equals the speed of light is 3.0 times 10 to the 8th meters per second. We go ahead and divide that by our wavelength, which is 7.5 times 10 to the negative 7th, and that would be meters. And what we can do here is we can take it, go ahead and divide that out, and we will get 4.0 times 10 to the 14th hertz and that would be our frequency. Okay. Now to find energy, remember that energy equals Planck's constant times frequency. So all we would have to do is take this 4.0, plug it into this equation and multiply it by Planck's constant, which if we remember that from the first lecture, that's 6.626 times 10 to the negative 34th. All we'd have to do is multiply that frequency by Planck's constant and we would get our energy. Moving on to the next one, it says, what is the wavelength of light that has a frequency of um, 5.35 times 10 to the 14th hertz? So on this one, we're taking our equation, C equals lambda F, and we're solving this time for wavelength. And so we take this, our speed of light, and we, well, 
first we got to get frequency to the other side and so we cancel and what we get is we get our wavelength equals the speed of light all over our frequency and so that is 3.0 times 10 to the 8th meters per second all over our frequency of 5.35 times 10 to the 14th and that is Hertz we go ahead and plug that into our calculator and we should get an answer of 5.61 times 10 to the negative seventh meters. Okay, And if we're looking at this, you see that times 10 to the negative seventh? What we could say there is that that is going to be visible light because it has that times 10 to the negative seventh and that is in meters so if we wanted to put this in nanometers all we would say is there's 561 nanometers because remember that's what that negative seventh we can look at that and say that now moving on we've talked about two equations so far we talked about that all electromagnetic radiation is governed by this equation right here and we also said that the energy of radiation can be calculated by using that equation and so we have all of our variables here but one thing that we can do that will help us out is if it asks us about energy and it only gives us the wavelength so if it asks us about energy and wavelength um, what we can do is we can combine those two things so the one thing that both of these equations have in common is they both have frequency in common and so what we can do is we can combine them since they both have one variable in common and we get this kind of combined equation right here and so we can use this in problems where it's asking us to find the energy and we just have the wavelength or where it just gives us the energy and it wants us to find the wavelength. So let's go ahead and use it. It says which color of light has an energy of 2.84 times 10 to the negative 19th joules. And so it gives us an energy and it gives us all these colors at very specific wavelengths. And so what we can do is we can find the wavelength. So when we're using our equation, we have our E equals Planck's constant times the speed of light all over wavelength and what we can do is we need to solve for wavelength. Now a trick here that you can kind of use here and also um, in physics a lot is that if you have something on the denominator and this variable is alone by itself a really quick thing that you can do is just switch those guys and so what you can do is switch wavelength and energy and algebraically that works out. Okay, so what we can say is that Planck's constant times the speed of light. So Planck's constant, let's go ahead and write this out. Planck's constant is 6.626 times 10 to the negative 34th times the speed of light, which is 3.0 times 10 to the 8th meters per second. All divided by our energy, which is our 2.84 times 10 to the negative 19th joules. We go ahead and plug this in a calculator and what we'll end up getting is we'll end up getting 7.0 times 10 to the negative 7th. And remember that's meters. So if I get 7.0 times 10 to the negative 7th, what I can say is all I have to do there is I have to multiply it by 1.0 times 10 to the 9th and I can get my nanometers and so what we have here is that's going to be 700 which that would be red is would be our color